What is up guys, Johnny Cooper 64 here, and today we are going to be looking at the Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time gameplay demo and doing an in-depth analysis. We get a short preview of the beginning of the level like Crash 3, except this time we see Crash Bandicoot having an animation scene where he's freezing to death, and we get these sort of Frankenstein walking creatures in the background. I guess their species will be the enemies for this ice level, and we also see red cubes in the background. It seems when you hit this red exclamation mark crate box, it will activate platforms to jump on. And since this is a sequel to Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped, we will still be able able to use some of the abilities from that game like double jumping because you can see it from here and also in these frames you can see crash bandicoot running so it seems that you can still be able to run i'm not quite sure if this is just like a little animation where it's just walking but he looks like it's running we see the bonus route platform as the gameplay starts which i'm glad is back it can be crash bandicoot without it then we get to a neat animation transition of the boat exploding and crash reacting to it all confused i'm glad they're doing these animations for every level as it feels like they're bringing the trilogy feels vibes to it, but making it so much more modern that it fits this generation. Now we see Coco Bandicoot in the white mask whose powers are used to slow time in order to jump into quick moving platforms or enemies, and we see it work here as you press a button in your control to activate the powers. We cut back to Crash slowing time, and I notice there's these yellow dust in the corner of the screen appears, but slowly but fastly also fade away, reminding you that you only have limited time to slow things out, and once it goes off the screen, you go back to normal time. We get a Crash Bandicoot death animation as he falls into the ice and the water looks beautiful here. Much more better than Insane Trilogies. Also the penguins are in the background and I see they have the Wrath of Cortex eyebrows from the distance. Now we're into the Gasmoxia station where you see Oxide species. I wonder if Oxide himself will be a boss battle in this game, but it's nice that they're showing species of existing characters. I hope we get to see more Bandicoots in this game. Also as it transitions into a 2D scroller Donkey Kong Country type B, the mask will only appear for a certain part of the level, you can't use it for the entire level. Only in selected areas will you need to use the powers that fit in those segments. Like in here, Coco needs the gravity mask to go upside down in order to avoid the electricity. And we even see here that you'll have to press the button to go upside down and then unpress it again to go back normal. And we see the running through walls ability we will get for this game. And we'll only be able to do that where there's arrows that are showing and the mask appears again for that part of the level. There's also a golden wumpa boxes now. When you hit him, you get a goldish shaped mango which breaks and gives you a lot of wumpa fruits. And now we're on the Rustland looking like level. This looks a lot like the Rustland Grand Prix from Nitrofield Donut. It has the whole Mad Max apocalypse look to it. There's this hot headed enemy you have to avoid in this level. And electricity going up and down which results in another crash death animation. I like the sound he makes when he gets electrocuted. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm a psychopath or something. We get Crash swinging into the rope Nathan Drake style, and we also have Crash in this level avoiding all the madness that's being unleashed upon herself. And I notice there's this glowing red circle in a box which Coco hits, but it seems to do nothing but give you Wumpa Fruits. I wonder what it is. We cut back to Crash, and this part reminds me of Titan since Engine speaks into the microphones in that game, and that is brought back here as Engine does the same thing. <laughs> I like that they're including details like that. And we will see the return of the gem path as we have a purple gem path here. We then see Crash sliding through rails, which is a nice feature. It reminds me a lot of how Sonic does the same thing, but here we get to not only slide through it with his shoes, but also via the hands to avoid objects from the top, along with jumping through different rails. Then it ends with Crash getting killed by a huge enemy with the angel animation. Now this enemy seems to be a large human with a purge-like mask and the chainsaw for a hand. Now for unique moments, in the official trailer that I didn't point out in my previous video, we see the return of the jet ski from Crash Bandicoot 2, which is nice that they're including a previous vehicle in this game. And we also see how we are going to be getting different creatures chasing us in unique levels. Like here we got a lava-like dimension as Crash is getting chased by a T-Rex, where he ultimately meets his demise, and we get a perfect shot of Crash's character model along with one of Cortex. These are the moments where I can appreciate the art style of the game. Then the one where this, this huge bluish monster chasing you as you run with a blue mask as you escape hell. Hopefully we get more creatures because I really like this design of the monster. We also get this engine boss battle where he's playing the drums inside a robot. 
that's also playing the drums which is nice as he's unleashing beats from this huge stereos and this is referencing towards titans as well as engine plays the piano in that game so in here he's playing another instrument which is drums i have to say it again i really love engine's design also there is a ctr easter egg where a hologram projects the letter ctr and cole we see this creature in the game also somebody pointed out on twitter where there's this little small gem right here that you can see which is colored red i wonder how that's going to be used in the game since this little gem seems very small compared to other gems from the previous video games what do you think the purpose is do you think it's just some sort of like new currency like wumpa fruits but in crash bandicoot sort of like spyro the dragon or do you think we'll have to collect these type of gems and it will have something similar towards like twin sanity for example where you'll be able to unlock concept art or maybe it's actually the currency in order to buy costumes like the pre-order skins that we got at the end of the trailer and the way we know Beanox is putting a lot of effort into this game is because they actually took the time in order to change the shapes of the Wampa Fruits. Instead of it just being one normal shape, all of them are very differently. We get like the normal Wampa Fruit and then we get like this sort of eggplant like Wampa Fruit, but most of them are very different and I like the details they put for that. And that's every detail I was able to find in this gameplay demo. Thank you guys so much for watching. Is there a detail that I missed in here? Let me know down in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.